Olivia, what does it feel like to be part of the MCU, and what was it about the character of Sonya that attracted you to the role? Uh, being part of the MCU for me is a dream come true. Um, I've been asking to be part of it for quite a while. Um, and Sonia, I mean, I always imagined maybe I'd be a superhero, but actually, Sonia, I, am, I loved playing her so much because she's, she, I think she's funny. I, I find it hilarious that she goes to a torture scene with a rather chic coat, a little handbag, and um, is clearly loving her job. And I love the fact that she and Fury are friends, share a history, have each other's back, sort of take the piss out of each other. I, I, it's such an enjoyable um, relationship that we have. And I think somewhere down the line, Sonia should either get bitten by some insect or yeah. thrown into a machine somewhere yeah. that when she comes out of it, she has the power of invisibility. Oh, Samuel Wouldn't that genius. be wonderful? Yes, that would be, be amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, work on that. And she'd get longer legs as well. Get longer legs yeah. too, make yeah. her taller. Yeah. Yes. And Sam, we see Nick Fury in a different light in the series. Tell us where he is and what is different about him when the story opens. Did you enjoy exploring this other side of him? Seeing Nick Fury in a different light in this particular series, and do I enjoy showing that particular side of him? I've always wanted to be a human Nick Fury. I always thought I was. I mean, I realized that there is a perception of Nick as, you know, being uh, sort of a cold fish in ways, but the only thing that he does is run hot or stay cold. Uh, so... It's kind of uh, great to find him in the position that we find him in this particular series, coming back to Earth after what I believe or perceive to be six years of absence after the blip, uh, and seeing the profound effect and damage that that absence has done to him or what happened in his head because he was gone and trying to figure it out. And coming back and having people tell him he's not the same person that he was before. And him being smart enough to believe it and try and figure out a way to solve the problems that uh, are presented to him as the old Nick Fury. And he finds he seeks ways to find himself or to get back to the powerful person that he used to be using the networks that he had from his past and some of the people in his presence. Olivia, Sonia is a seasoned MI6 agent. What is she trying to accomplish, and what is her relationship with Nick Fury like? So Sonia's a seasoned MI6 agent, and she's basically, uh, she's trying to protect her country, no matter what, that's an, a spy's job. She goes a little further than most spies. Um, and her relationship with Nick Fury, they they clearly knew each other back in the day before Fury's ascension to um, the spaceship and Avengers and everything, but when he was sort of um, on the ground working his way up as a spy, and I think that's when they met and they, I think, respect each other, respect each other's work. They're clearly working for different um, people, but... I think they would always look out for each other and they trust each other and they admire each other. So, um, and they have a laugh, it's quite mm. nice. Sam, what is Nick Fury's relationship with Talos and the other scrolls he brought to Earth? Well, if, what is Nick Fury's relationship to Talos and the other scrolls that he brought? Well, if you saw Captain Marvel, you know that Nick Fury was with her while uh, the scrolls were having their war with the Kree. Uh, and he helped her liberate uh, the scrolls from the Kree, but also knowing that their world was destroyed by the Kree, promised them that he and Carol Danvers would find a new planet for them to live on. Uh, it's been almost 20 years now, and he has not fulfilled that promise. Uh, and the few scrolls that he knew came to Earth because they had a destroyed ship, so they couldn't go off. Half of them were in a prison camp somewhere else, and the other, the rest of them were stranded somewhere in 
the galaxy, and Carol was taking care of them, uh, according to what Nick's knowledge is of them. So the few scrolls that he know on that that he knows are on Earth are Talos, his wife, their daughter, maybe a one or two more. Uh, so it's a shock for him to find out that all these scrolls are on Earth, uh, and that Talos snuck them in. And he's a bit perturbed by that idea and knows that if the general populace of the world found that out, that would be an issue. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where he is right now with them. All right, so this one's going to be for the both of you. Tell us what you each enjoyed the most about working with one another. Olivia, you can go. What I enjoyed most about working with Sam, that's very hard to answer as a one, there wasn't like one thing. Mm. I enjoyed the process of being on camera together, the acting together, but I love talking to Sam Offset, I've loved, uh, I loved watching you interact with the whole crew, with your team, with it, the whole thing has been everything I'd hoped for. Like one of the loveliest men working and I'm so honored to have been part of it. Oh, oh my god. You made us both cry. <laughs> uh, working with Olivia Coleman. You better be nice now. Is that? <laughs> you know, it's first of all, it's not work. It's, you know, a joy and pleasure to share the artistic space in that way from using words that other people have written to express our relationship uh, on the inside of a story that feels like something that's genuine and not forced. Uh, that's you know, very, 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 very um, precious to have when mm. you're doing you know, work, uh, to make it seem like not work. Uh, the joy of seeing her come in the room and light it up because that's what she does. You know, the the room just gets kind of brighter when she shows up and everybody's like, oh, Olivia's here. This is going to be such an easy day because she makes it easy and she makes it joyous. And you feel like you've done something special when you finish working with her, no matter what that is right now. You know, even in, you know, something as trivial as what people think is a Marvel story. <laughs> uh, she, she does have, you know, a wonderful life that, you know, I'm always inquiring about and asking about, and I love hearing her talk about her kids and her husband. Um, I think that, you know, one of the, the wonderful things about being able to be in this business is you meet people that you genuinely know uh, leave their mark on the world in a positive way. And that's what she does and is doing and has done. Uh, and the world's a better place because she's in it. Oh, my God, Especially Sam. mine. Oh, you... Stop. I feel exactly the same. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's another one for both of you. Ali Salem directed all six episodes of Secret Invasion. What is his style and what does he bring to the project? Olivia, we'll start with you again. The Ali, who directed all six episodes, which is not common on a, on a project like this, mm. it's often two or three or sometimes four different directors. Yeah. And so, I mean, hats off to him for taking on <laughs> all of us and all of that. Um, he, it's just, he was always so calm, so gentle, nothing was too much trouble. And I mean, I, I would have, you know, I was going to say my hair would have fallen out trying to do it, and he, he is, he's not a man with a lot of hair. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that was us that did it to him, but um, he was the gentlest, sweetest, most intelligent, emotionally available, wonderful man. There was no shouting. Everybody respected him. He really knew what he was doing. He was on it. I, and I, also, I just loved the, he, the ability when things were being set up around us, he could come over and have a chat, mm -hmm. and he had amazing life experiences, mm -hmm. and um, just to, you sort of forgot that he was carrying the weight of all of this because mm. he was so gentle and calm at all times. Yeah. A genuinely lovely human being, and um, I'm very pleased to have met him. I'm very impressed with what he did, and I loved being directed by him. I was, um, Ali as director, 
you know, I always think a director is very smart that, you know, kind of leaves me alone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, they hire us for a reason. Uh, and there are, there are some people that come onto a movie set that I, I, I generally tell directors, I always tell them all the time when we have one of our first conversations, you know, I've already seen this movie. And they go, oh, what do you think? And I say, well, in my head, I've seen the movie. I know what I'm doing from page one to page 151. And if you let me do it, I think you'll be okay. And he did. Uh, I commend him for that, you know, because there were, there, were, there, were, there were difficult days. And not necessarily days that I was difficult with him, but there were difficult, you know, the situations were strange or the things that were happening around the set, that, you know. And, and we were doing this right after COVID, so there were a lot of protocols and mm. things going on. So it's not your general movie set. Mm. And he found a way to remain calm uh, and a steady hand on the rudder of that ship mm. that I don't think a lot of people would have been able to do. Yeah. Uh, and he and he allowed the production to blossom in all the ways that it had to blossom. And sometimes when, you know, the flower was up and it was sitting in the water some days, you'd come back and the petals would be curled up or falling off. And you'd look and go, Okay, what are we gonna do? And he was fine. He it's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. And he would prune those things off, <laughs> and they would, you know, put some fertilizer in the water, and it would get healthy again. <laughs> and we would go away, and they would call us back and go, uh, "The flower's not so well right now." Can you come <laughs> back? And he never, you know, assigned blame to anyone. He took responsibility for everything that was happening around there because he was the captain of that ship. And he was a good captain. Yeah. You know, in calm and stormy waters. Yes. Yeah. You're a poet. There were great practical sets and several interesting locations. What was your favorite set location and why, Olivia? My favorite set? I think I, the first, oh, sorry, my, yeah, my favorite set uh, on this, I think, was, was the first set that you meet Sonia on partly because it was in Hatfield House, which is a beautiful building. Mm. Um, and I do love old buildings. And I have filmed in there before, so it was exciting to go back. Um, and it was, it was a huge room. There was lots of space for everybody, and you didn't have to build it. Mm. Um, so that was, I, I, lo I love that building. So that I was very happy to go back there. And then other sets for me weren't as exciting as that. I, they, um, we were outside in the woods, that was nice. Mm -hmm. Car mm -hmm. was fun. Yeah. But I think the most beautiful and my favorite set was definitely the first one in her office with all the clocks, which was Hatfield House. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that, that house too. I've actually shot in that house several times too. Yeah, it does lots of yeah, fun. Yeah, because we did, we did um, part of uh, Captain Marvel in that particular house. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. It was, um, no. It was something else. It was Scarlet's, Scarlet's dance school. Oh. And when she was a Russian, it was her dance school. We did a whole thing in there. Um, so I like that set a lot. And one of the reasons I like that set so much is because that's where I met you. Mm -hmm. So that will always have, you know, that whole special thing. And it's like the first thing I ever did with you was there because this oh. is not the last thing we're going to do together for sure. I hope not. Uh, and I liked my house. The house like they it. created for me, or the house that they got that was that set, I liked that house. It was a nice house that felt like, you know, um, Charlene and I had lived in it. It felt like a lived-in space. Mm. You know, Nick wasn't there very much, according to the lore of the script. <laughs> I think what viewers can expect when they watch Secret Invasion is... Uh throw away what you expect to expect because it's uh it is a marvel universe piece but this is different this is i think inviting a whole new load of fans in because there's a lot of old school espionage spy thriller um stuff which is you know, it's a very third man and all sorts of truth be told the truth um, be told yeah. viewers can expect to see 
the best damn acting they've ever seen done <laughs> in the Marvel Universe by this group of people that are on this poster and everybody else who has a particular part in this series that passes through it in any way or any capacity because the bar was set very high. Yeah. <laughs>